It's no secret that a lot of people thought that Harbour was incredibly underpowered at release. And though he did get a buff into the number of cascade charges and slight durations increase, people still thought it wasn't enough. However, staying ahead of the meta is the key to success at the top echelons. So let's take a look at a team who used him absolutely superbly on Icebox. Starting off with the comparison to the agent he replaces, Sage. Both agents have a skill to block oncoming fire, barrier orb for Sage and Co for Harbour, which is super important for taking B site. But you'll find a lot more versatility in Harbour's Cove compared to the barrier orb. You're able to plant anywhere with relative safety with Harbour's Cove, meaning more in the open plants, countering the common Sage barrier than plant strat. Another massive bonus of running Harbour is it allows the toxic screen to just be dumped on B regardless of where they want to end up. But with Harbour, you can do that and section off the entry from rafters, meaning if the enemies want to contest backside, they have to push out into the open. Finally, Sage will often wall here, here or here, which Harbour can do just as easily, as well as offering a lot more vision denial, especially on the fly. Now, before you say, what about the res and the heal? Sage isn't picked for her res or her heal. They're just kind of nice byproducts of her barrier and I guess slow orb. If they were that broken, you'd see her picked on every map, which you don't. So let's see how a team like DRX utilize him. Starting on pistol and straight off the bat, you're gonna see DRX run this setup pretty much every single attacking round. Viper wall across B, with a cascade to block off vision from yellow down the line. This immediately forces Cloud9 to respect the possibility that they could be creeping up behind the wall. So utility needs to be spent to clear it out and they can't just instantly rotate in case there is a lurk. After the initial setup, DRX instantly rotate over towards A to meet up with the remaining members. Note the poison orb in mid to deny the defenders that information. Even though Sova has shown presence with an early drone, they end up cutting noise and it actually causes two members of Cloud9 to rotate over towards B. I am presence noted now. Stacked up here, three members of Cloud9, although Vanity Ooh. drifting away from this, so it would just be Ye and Zelsis to hold down the four. Still got that wall available. Ye actually armed with a sheriff will get an opening tag. Got themselves a window of opportunity though, Mike. High Tide comes through, blocking off screens and top rafter, making Killjoy really hesitant to push through since they don't have control of back sight. Serious damage here, spams away, does not find connection towards Marco, who does find one back at DRX, not out of it yet. Vanity left to the 1v1. Trades come through and Sova ends up closing out the 1v1 and DRX take pistol. And Zess closing in, DRX. Round four, and after DRX win the bonus, Cloud9 have had enough of this beast setup and decide to push it with three players. But the deep mollies from both Viper and Killjoy means that the rest of the map is probably pretty weak and DRX instantly grab Spike and pivot towards A. And this is their execute in a nutshell. High tide screens and rafters, cloud burst and nano swarm to section off back site, drone up maze as Jet takes control of Jen and Harbour to throw down a cove and plant with relative safety. With the Spike plant up top, you're able to sit in really entrenched positions and the extra usage of high tide back here means defenders are pretty much forced to push you to contest. Otherwise, they can't really see you as you pick off the diffusers from belt or nest. Yeah, Vanity will. Deep, can he go for this? Okay. It's a very deep lockdown actually. Yeah. It's way ahead of screens the traditional position for it. See how it goes. Does it hold? Buzz gonna finally buzz onto Zep up. Eventually goes down. The view's gonna start. Gonna maybe get it towards halfway. Yes, body blocking in effect. Turn and face the music. RB again. A botched barrier from Cloud9 and RB cleans up the round. Here again, it's the same setup. Cascade and the Viper Wall, just like every other round, but this time they actually scale up behind it. And off contact, Sage is forced to fall back and a weight rotates, especially given they have a Killjoy lockdown in hand side of the map here taking complete space towards A sees nothing so again will allow for that rotation to come in early and DRX going through the motions the site take is having so much control of yellow and their half of site Sova is able to break the enemy lockdown harbor coves up and because of all the suppressing fire and util behind it it doesn't end up getting broken and harbor is able to make it out safely after planting the spike 
and naturally they have a Vipers Pit lineup that just covers the spike. A very nice set execute from DRX. A big response, heavily invested around it, plenty of ults put into play. And now we look at what this all means. They invest their own lockdown and Cloud9, running out of time and bodies, end up having to save and DRX get to 7. By now, it's been an absolute clinic from DRX. And I hope you're thinking, damn, Harbour's looking pretty good. But wait until you see DRX's final attacking round. It's a fast A push, but Ye has had enough and has pushed down himself, netting two kills and still getting out safely. 5v3 now, and it's Cloud9's round to lose. Another round, a consolation prize potentially. First time they get away scot free with an opening engagement, to be honest. The last round was exactly like this. They had that first entry pick that came on towards RB. I think it was with the Hunter's Fury off the back um, of, of Zephyr's early work. And yes, they were able to stabilize, but these haven't been. Having zero map control, DRX are kind of forced to make A work. Reckoning reveals no one is on site and they're able to get the spike down on top for free, with Cloud9 opting to play for a retake at a massive player advantage. They can still. Reset towards this post plant. That you, you shouldn't be losing a 5v3 at this point. Cloud9 need everything they can get here. Vanity the first to be willing to touch the spike. Pings come in and Marco denies Leaf. And now just down to Stax and Marco to make this work. Rez coming in more. Bodies being put on the spike, but the spike is still not being diffused right now. Zelsis, the second attempt at it now, has to be dealt with. Oh, and it is Stax! Incredible work and DRX are immovable at this point. Destined to close out this half. The close high tide again makes it really awkward for Cloud9 to contest Nest and Belt from the ground. And combined with the Cove, they literally cannot hit the players up top as Stax swings out to deny the diffusers. DRX clean up the stragglers, finish the half 11 to 1 and end up sending Cloud9 home with a dominating scoreline of 13 to 2. The Cloud9 Colossus has crumbled as DRX demolished them. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. It would mean the world to me. Until next time, see ya.